Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim, and welcome to Tim Talks, the show that's only partially a show. It really is just an excuse for me to hang out with my very talented friends. And speaking of talented friends, I have another one here with me today. They're a very talented voice actor, actor, writer, and just all around awesome person, Jesse Nowak. Welcome to the show. Hi. Good to good to be here. Uh, did I say that right, Nowak? Uh, Nowaking, yeah, it's <laughs> excellent. I know that your handle and everything is Nowaking, but uh, mm -hmm. the last names are always important to me. Yeah, no, I appreciate that because, like, all through school, it was just Novak, and I was like, nope. Um, <laughs> and there's also a very fun thing where people like it must just be that because my last name is Nowak, they assume my last name is Nowaking. So sometimes I will get introduced at conventions as Jesse Nowaking, and I'm like, it's. There's like, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but there's like a weird, that's like a combination, like you're shipping me with myself. And I don't know if that's hot or weird, but I'm into it. But also, <laughs> my, my last name I mean, is Nowak, actually. <laughs> what is sex if not sex with someone you love, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, can... um, for those who may not know you or, or what things that you've done, give us sort of a Reader's Digest version of your CV. What, what, what are some things um... that people may know you from? Uh, let's see. Um, I was, uh, Saris in Helsinger Bridge by Team Four Star. I'm, um, I, I used to, like, just voice for Team Four Star, and now I'm, like, an, an actual member, which is cool and weird, and I'm still getting used to that. Um, I'll eventually, I was supposed to move down there, actually. They, they wanted me to move, um, to Dallas, where we're based, mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm gonna work in, in studio and, and be kind of more of a, a face of the company now. Less like, of a I'm, satellite I'm here, employee and more of a actually in-house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then the world exploded, so uh, it'll be sometime next year eventually. Um, well, that's so cool, man. That. I look forward yeah. to having you here in Texas. I'm in Austin, actually, and so that's that's oh, cool. just down the road. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to get used to being a Texan after I've lived on the East Coast my whole life. One, one um, thing I will say, get yeah. used to sweet cream corn. Oh, I know. I know. I right. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that like you did. I didn't think would be a difference when I got here, but I had mm -hmm. cream corn for the first time and I expected salty because we are from Georgia, y'all. And that's the way we make mm. it over there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Heavy cream, cream cheese, and then a little bit of salt and pepper. I could Sweet. get used to that. Corn is my favorite vegetable, so I yeah. could I could dig that. Yeah. Fair enough. Sorry, please um, continue. Yeah, no worries. I'm like I'm like, what was I in? Let's talk about Texas. Um, let's see. Um, you look like a person like me who has a high metabolism, which means you probably mm -hmm. eat a lot of food. So mm -hmm. nice little handy food tip for you. Well, it's funny. I've been trying to. <laughs> I'll get back to my roles in a second, but this is <laughs> interesting to me. This is the way it goes. Um, this is the way it goes. <laughs> That's also just, I, I feel like my audience specifically is used to this because my videos, they'll start with a point and then we just, we go all the way around to like everything else and then eventually I get back at the point. Trust um, me, I have <laughs> notes about that. I yeah. promise. Yeah. Um, let's see, what was I even, oh, I, uh... I've been trying to gain more weight because I actually don't eat a lot hmm. and I've been working out uh, so, so much. Since quarantine started, I've been working out every other day, mm. and um, the difference in my body is, like, crazy. I'm going to do a video on it, but um, I, 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 part of the issue with why I wasn't gaining muscle before was that I wasn't, like, I didn't have anything. You need something to, to build and make the muscle out of. And yeah, I you have so to take skinny. in more calories than you're putting out, which if you're yeah. t doing <laughs> increased amount of calories, then you definitely need to take in a lot more. I mean, the, yeah. I love that picture of the rock in front of one of his breakfasts, and it's like a seven <laughs> stack of pancakes and 14 <laughs> pieces of bacon. And oh, Khaleesi. Oh, yeah, she's here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> If I'm doing anything, of course, it has to be her video. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, I've been I love stuff to gain like more. that. Yeah, like I, I've been doing the protein shakes and all that, so that's been good. Um, oh God, what have I even... Uh, I was a uh, vinyl scratch. I played a uh, fan voice of that horse in the My Little Pony fandom, and I was that in a bunch of animations and songs and stuff. I think that may have uh, been one of the first places that I got kind of introduced to you, uh, other oh, yeah. than Helsing Ultimate, was it was... As, um, oh my god, you just said the character's name and then it went away. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna say it, you gotta, you gotta remember. Oh, come on, please don't do this to me. Starts with a V? <laughs> it is so late. I don't shoot these, uh, these late normally, please. Uh, vinyl. vinyl scratch. Yes. <laughs> I, like, I could see it perfectly in my head. I could see the sunglasses, and I could see the cutie yeah. mark, and I could see everything. I'm just so bad with names. That's like my kryptonite. It really is. 
One of my favorite movies is Knives Out, and we were doing the uh, Among Us stream. I was talking about how Among Us is weird with me because I can't lie. I just sound the same all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I, we were talking about Knives Out because Marta, the character, can't lie, and she, like, throws up, and it's a part of the plot. Um, and I, it's one of my favorite movies, and I couldn't remember Marta's name. And I was like, like during the stream, I was just like, fuck, this is going to bother me. Also, can I swear? Yes. Yes, you absolutely okay. can. <laughs> we're well in past it's a, a minute, so go on ahead. Cool. Fucking great. Um, I should I put like, that in my pre-show so notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I was just like, it was bothering me, and I was like trying to remember, and I was like, chat, don't tell me. This is so upsetting that I can't remember the main character's name of one of my favorite movies. Yeah. But sometimes it just gets away from you. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, when you like, all I could think of was Twilight Sparkle, and that was not the thing. <laughs> and it's it's one of those weird things. I don't know if this happens to you, but it happens to me, where you get kind of mm-hmm. focus locked on one yeah. word or one thing, and you're like, no, that's not the right thing. I'm telling you, Brian, it's not the right thing, but it's all that mm-hmm. my search engine can return, you know? Yes. Uh, so, like, I got stuck on that for a second. I was like, no, that's that's actually a real one. That's not even close to what we're talking about. <laughs> Vaguely so, related. Yeah. What's also funny is that I've done enough videos now that people actually get used to my dyslexia. I, I like to mm-hmm. switch words around. And so one of the other days, I uh, one of the other days when we were recording a little bit of Half-Life, I did that literally live on camera. And there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm not going to edit it together. Whatever. Yeah. Fine. So you just deal with your own little quirks and idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and it's part of your charm, you know? It's what makes you, what makes your content and you as a person unique, so Jesse, like... Jesse, did you just call me charming? Yeah, maybe, that would be I maybe fantastic. did. Yeah. I did a video <laughs> on it, actually, like, the other day where I was talking about that, where it's like, if someone says, like, you have an annoying laugh, that's not subjective, or I rather, rather it is, it's not objective, it is a subjective thing. Some people really like your laugh, some people, if it's unique and it is part of you and your content, it's valuable and you shouldn't get rid of it, you know? I agree. And so (laughs) kind of segueing nicely into you and your content that you're making now. So uh, I I know that you're doing a good bit of voice work right now, but I kind of want to talk about your YouTube series for a little bit. Uh, You have branched away from doing just strictly off camera work and actually showing those beautiful blues right there on uh, on camera. Blues? Mm -hmm. Browns? Brown. Okay, it's the, the camera resolution. <laughs> anyway, so yes, and you got to enjoy seeing someone's face that you have heard the voice of for a good while. How are you finding the transition? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, yeah I um, because it's also <laughs> it's funny you you use the word transition because um, pre-transition I just like hated everything about my body and how I looked and everything, and and now that I have like been on T for a certain amount of time i just i love how i look and i feel so comfortable and and happy that like i am comfortable doing on camera stuff again and that was for the for the longest time i was so embarrassed and scared and i just felt weird and bad all the time but now i'm like excited to do more on camera stuff that's really amazing uh to to kind of have that growth be documented Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, yeah, and, yeah, that that was also uh, important to me because, like, uh, I needed someone like me to look up to when I was a kid. You know, because like I didn't know what trans was until I was like an adult, and I think I would have known when I was like seven or eight years old if I had been educated at all about trans stuff, yeah. um, and I would have felt less sad and alone for the longest time if 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 I had known this was a thing. Um, and I could get the, the help that I needed, but I, I didn't. So I was just like sad for a long time. Um, and I think it's important to show th- I'm a success story. And there are there's unfortunately not a lot of trans uh, success stories that people can look up to. Like as of late, it's been getting better. Uh, but we're still not at the, the point that we need to, you know, there's, there's yeah. a whole lot of sad statistics I can get into, but I would rather focus on the positives and be like, Hey, I'm d- doing shit and I'm happy and you, it gets better. Like you, whatever situation you're in, it can get better. And I think it's important for people to, to see that. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And so a lot of the videos that you're making right now deal with a wide variety of topics, stuff like uh, you did a, a lovely video that I saw of a zero to 50 week on T transition of just your voice and how your mm-hmm. voice changes throughout something like that. And um, sex as a trans man and, mm-hmm. and your coming out story and how to use dating apps and things that kind of get people 
uh, get ideas like that more normalized. And I think that that's important. Yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> do, can, can you kind of talk about the, the how that, those brain children came about? Like that was not where <laughs> the YouTube channel started, but that's where it is. And, and how did you get there? Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, when when you first transition, there's a lot of questions that sometimes they can be uncomfortable for some people if you are like newly in your transition you don't want to be asking a whole bunch of uh, like if people are just asking about your junk you're like listen i'm still figuring it out i don't <laughs> want to talk about that with you um to stranger like sometimes it's family members sometimes it's just strangers okay um, yeah i can see that happening <laughs> yeah there's because and, and it's understandable to a degree because like i said there, there when i was a kid there wasn't a lot of education on mm -hmm. the subject and right now there isn't a lot of education on the subject. Like what so, percent of it would you say is just innocent curiosity? I would say that's a lot of it. I think most of the questions I maybe, get aren't maybe malicious. Maybe misworded, but still uh, innocent it's more curiosity. It's just like they don't know that it's not okay. Right, right. Right, yeah. A lot of it is just a lot of miswording and stuff. And it's not their fault. It's just because they haven't been no told educated. how to ask about certain things, uh, yeah. you know. Um, so a lot of it is just just curiosity and they don't understand like, oh, this might be a little uncomfortable for you to be asking. Um, so I wanted to talk about the things that that people who are looking to educate themselves, uh, they can see these videos and be like, cool, OK, use this wording. Don't use this word, this, this and this so that I am able to help other people feel comfortable, you know, uh, both trans and cis, whoever is asking about anything, um, or if you're on the receiving end of a question, if I go on a video and say, hey, um, this is what has happened with my penis over the past 10 months, then someone doesn't have, they can understand like, oh, one, I shouldn't ask someone about their junk because Jesse says not to do that in this video, and two, now I know the information, you yeah, know? because people are curious. I, at, you know, uh, you have a platform <laughs> like a, from which you can offer the information freely in a forum where it's appropriate. Exactly. Yeah. I'd much rather take them aside and be like, hey, I'm going to educate you on this thing so that you don't have a weird grocery store interaction with right. someone. Right. Like, so you, you don't know? end up doing that human foible of just being curious. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world to try and educate yourself. It's having the vocabulary with which to do so, knowing when the time and place is to ask those kind of questions. And, and, and yeah. I think having more representation in front of you so that you can see normalize. I think exactly. that's, a, that's a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to kind it's of, everything. Yeah. If yeah. I could just normalize things a little more, cause, cause it's also like, not just cis people looking up these videos, it's also trans people. You know, when I, I would have loved to know how deep my voice was going to get or if it would get and what, what, um, what side effects T has and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. uh, if I can make a video on that, people are going to look it up, you know, like it's, it, that's, that's kind of what I did in the beginning when I yeah. was like, oh God, I don't know. I, I definitely need to transition, but I don't know if I'm going to have a career after this, what's going to happen? Are people going to be cool with it? You know, and, right. and I like to tell it how it is. So I want to be realistic about it. And so I make a video and I'm like, Hey, listen, this is going to be like, if you need to physically transition, it could be, and there's a good chance it will be the best thing that will ever happen to you. You will feel comfortable and happy in your body and you'll get to realize who you really are. And there's nothing better than that. But I do want to be realistic. And there are people in your life who are not going to be supportive and there are, but yeah. there are going to be people who are going to be supportive. There are good people out there. You just need to find them. Your, um, your friends may not be that anymore and your family might not be that anymore, but you can find an equivalent of both out there in the world who will be supportive. Exactly. Yeah. Ch chosen family is super important to me. And it, and it always was because uh, regular family to me was never important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I transitioned, I was like, hey, if I just don't talk to them anymore, that's cool with me. The only one I give a shit about is my mom. Yeah. And, uh, and I she's was actually going to bring her up. It sounds like I, I just from the couple of things that I've seen in your tweets and stuff that you have a wonderful relationship with your mom. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> she's the fucking best. Like, honestly, just a terrific human being. Um, I'm so grateful that, like, she raised me because, uh, you know, I... I I'm me because of her, you know, like there's there's things that, that rub off on you from like uh, and, and she was like a single mom. So it was just us for the longest time. And I so much that is good about me is because of her. And I'm like, 
so grateful for it. Just a just a a sunshine of a human being, and and so I knew she was going to be supportive. But but also, you know what? I don't know. I think it's one of those things where you think you know a person, but sometimes they can surprise you. I think you're completely uh, justified to be nervous about telling anybody because mm-hmm. you just never know, unfortunately. Like, we can yeah. think we know a person, we can think we know how they're going to react, but it isn't until somebody's actually put in that circumstance of, oh, someone that I love isn't comfortable in the skin that they're in mm-hmm. and wants to do something about it before that actually gets t- put to the test, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you and actually, also, that really yeah, tells you the people that you want to keep around. So I, I'm really glad to hear that you have your mom in that in your corner in that way. Yeah, yeah, because it's also um, like we want to relate to people, but sometimes if we don't understand, it might be difficult to like for for I we all have a lot of ignorant thoughts, you know. Like for for the longest time, uh, I had a lot of like toxic positivity where I just didn't understand racial issues or queer issues or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you educate yourselves because like I have never had to, I think I talked about this in a video once, but like I've never been uh, harassed or beaten down verbally because I'm black because I'm not black. So I can't experience that. I don't know what it's like. So if someone has like a weird, racial interaction and they're like hey that sucked and i feel bad if i'm just sitting there like oh man that sucks maybe like go for a run or something like i i don't i could have a lot of ignorant thoughts and say a lot of ignorant things just because i am not i don't have that life experience and stuff so if someone is cisgender and i'm transgender they might not be able to understand unless they're actually trying to show empathy and like relate to us because they're like oh why don't you just stay in the previous body i don't understand i could do that why can't you you know and they don't i, think I can about it i can live with a hurt elbow why can't you live with your gender not being correct right yeah like they think it's they they, they can't relate to it in the proper way so they're like i yeah. just don't get it you know um but if they're trying to educate themselves that's what i'm, I'm trying to, to help with you know and and i've gotten lovely lovely messages and interactions at conventions and stuff uh from parents of trans kids or trans adults or their brothers or their sisters or their their uh their siblings are trans or something and they're like hey your videos really helped me or they they helped them i get a lot of people that were like hey i didn't know i could be a voice actor until i saw you doing it you know Mm. and that's like the most meaningful thing on the planet uh because like i said before i didn't know if i was gonna have a career after i transitioned i didn't know what it was like i just knew that it had to happen because i was just so miserable there was no quality of life before that i was like well i'd rather be alive than have a career so i'll just do it and we'll see what happens i think Um, something that's become so important in this 18 to 20 night 2018 to 2020 year range is that idea of representation uh, both visually and auditorily and Mm -hmm. and i think that people being able to see people like them people they may not understand people they may not agree with being represented on screen uh, it just does something to us because we have this trained to the screen idea now, you know, seeing it and, and seeing it being represented in a way that makes us feel comfortable with it helps you deal with those ideas. And it shouldn't have to be that way. You know, it should just be uh, human rights are human rights, regardless of what kind of human that is, you know, and, and but to get there, unfortunately, is taking more time. And I'm glad that we have. Uh, such strong icebreakers like yourself to kind of uh, uh, bear the brunt of that path for those who may not be as strong. Thank to you. To kind of yeah. put a nice little pin on that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, so to where did you grow up? <laughs> Ooh, that, that's a good question. Let's mm-hmm. see. I've kind of been all over. I was born in California, actually. Um, and then my mom and I moved uh, to Pennsylvania. We've lived around Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and I kind of moved around there most of my like childhood. Um, and then when I was 15, we moved to Connecticut. I lived there for five years. Then I lived on Staten Island for five years. Then I was in Brooklyn for a year. And now I'm in Philly. So wow. I, I'm mostly the East Coast. And then I'm going to Dallas, you know, sometime next year. So I've, I've, I move a lot. So you've gotten around quite a bit. Uh-huh. If it makes you feel any better, I've done a very similar thing just sticking to the Southeast. So mm-hmm. I got you. It, it yeah. ha- like the story of one's life looks like a very curved line until you look at it from behind and you're like no it's actually pretty straight 
Yeah. The road yeah. to get right here was actually pretty pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, a lot of schools, a lot of, like, I went to um, three different high schools. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask how that affected you as far as schooling and stuff. Did you ever have a chance to get kind of comfortable in a place? I don't think so, actually. I think the longest I was at one school was maybe, like, four, four years, maybe, mm-hmm. in, like, middle school. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there, because, like, yeah, I, I uh, eventually... I stopped trying to make friends just because I was just moving so much that I, I was I was tired. Uh, but luckily, I have a personality um, and uh, that that the people are attracted to, and like friends wanted to be friends with me, and so I didn't have to do anything after a while. And I was like, good. okay, good. Because I was going <laughs> to ask about that, like, how did that kind of impact you? And it sounds like it did by trying not to reach out to people when you just end up getting plucked out, like like a mandrake root screaming and crying, going yeah, to the exactly. next freaking place. Uh, I, I'm glad yeah. that people still reached out to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I um, didn't do that a whole lot as far as school. I ended up staying in fairly square spots, but uh, I can imagine how that would have been. Mm-hmm. So um, we were talking a little bit about the content that you were making and getting back a little bit to that. Some of the other mm-hmm. stuff that you're making is a little bit more... Um, we'll say freeform when it comes to like reviews and stuff. We have a couple of uh, TV and mu- movie things. You were talking mm-hmm. about Tell Me Why the video game and how trans representation is important in that. Uh, mm-hmm. Did a little piece on both Harley Quinn and She-Ra and the Birds of Prey movie. Yeah. Uh, I assume then because you've done voice work in TV shows and anime and stuff like that, or you're pretty into TV, video games, movies, that kind of media? Yeah, yeah. I, I love... Um... Despite the gamer chair, I'm not a huge gamer. I I love exploring, like, I'm more about what the story is and the voice acting and and, and what makes a video game, uh, why why someone chose to make a video game to tell that story instead of a movie or a television show. Like, yeah, I I love exploring that Yeah, the medium choice can be very powerful in that way. Yeah, because like you can do such unique things with video games specifically um, that you can't with uh, television or movies. It's more of a, an interactive experience, and I find that so fascinating. Like mm-hmm. stuff like Doki Doki Literature Club or Undertale, things that like they need to be a video game in order to yeah. fully get what the creator was going for. Um, you can't. Ooh, I've got just a couple of good watch. recommendations for you. By the time we get out of here, remind me about awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm very into t- t- cartoons and, and stuff. Um, Do you have a current uh, favorite? Ooh. Uh, I fucking love the Harley Quinn cartoon. It's so good. Um, I've been She-Ra. enjoying that myself. I, I'm yeah. not going to lie. That, that's one of my favorite DC properties coming out right now because yeah. a lot of the movies have been weak for the movie <laughs> quality and we're not even going to brush on the live action stuff. So like, <laughs> you kind of get your juice where you can and Harley Quinn is so good. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and which was It has so no right to be great. as good as it is, but how great yeah. is Ron Funches' as King Shark? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so yeah. fun. Like, everyone's having a blast, and it. What, what really feels good to me about it is that, as a voice actor, I can appreciate how natural... Ev- everyone sounds so natural. Sometimes with cartoons, you have people recording in separate rooms and it feels mm-hmm. kind of stitched together. But with them, it feels like it's a live action prog, pro, uh, production that, that like got animated rather I, than I like I can totally is, feel what you're getting yeah. at because it feels like everybody's playing off of each other even if they weren't actually in the room. Well, you know, I, I haven't seen any behind the scenes stuff to know how it was actually recorded or anything, but I can guess uh, that maybe like half the cast is in the same room and then the other half. So like the, it just speaks yeah. to the quality of the acting and the quality of the editing that it can just feel an ensemble like that because I absolutely agree. Uh, mm-hmm. And I love the relationships between all the characters that are getting developed, not just the love relationship, but like all of the different characters and the different ways that they get to process what's going on in the story. And oh my God, mm-hmm. Bane. I love Bane for the first time ever. He's one of my yes. favorite characters. Like, come on. Yeah, no, it's crazy that they were. That's that's what's so unique about it is is they kind of harnessed what makes a bridge series cool, which is that you can take a character and do whatever the fuck you want with them and hmm. twist them in a way, you know, that like, that's where Bane and fucking Clayface come from. You know, is just I hadn't having thought about that. You're absolutely right. Taking yeah. the core of a character and just 15 degreesing it. 
Like, yeah. that's all you need to do. You don't need to go completely way balls to the wall out there. If you're going to do, like, uh, what they did with Goku and Dragon Ball Z abridged, I absolutely mm -hmm. love that they took the core character and then 15 degrees it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. And sometimes you, all you have to do is just make a caricature of what the original character was, and then all of a sudden you have something super fun and interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, so I, I yeah. had not even thought about that about Harley Quinn, but you're absolutely right. It feels like something more fun than what would be a factory-made product, and that usually does come from fan projects. Yeah, exactly, because huh. uh, we don't yeah. have a choice. We, uh, a bridge series are kind of the Mad Libs of entertainment, where we have something that we have to work with, and then we, we play with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's been super mm. fun. I love Harley Quinn. Uh, and Bojack is also one of my favorite shows ever. Oh, really? Ever. <laughs> I, mean, I yeah. haven't broken into that one. Uh, that, that's one of those that I've heard nothing but amazing things about. And I love, uh, it's not Will Forte, it's, um, <sighs> shit, Lego Batman. Again, there's there's the name thing coming back to, to haunt me. Um, yeah. Oh, same. I can't remember his name. Will Arnett? That's it. Will Arnett. Yeah, I absolutely right. love Will Arnett, so I imagine mm. that it would be great. How is it? Oh, it's fantastic, yeah. Um, it's really a role that we haven't seen him fully. Like, like BoJack, it's a cartoon. So at surface value, most people are going to see it and be like, what is this? Is this just another random adult swim show? But it is, it's so deep and it says so much. It mm. gets into topics that are really, really important to me personally. And, and really, it doesn't go easy on the entertainment industry because the, uh, the, the, the story is about, uh, uh, you know, essentially a washed up 90s TV star and how he's dealing with stuff nowadays. Right. And he has addictions and he ha he's a narcissist. And it, it really goes into like what the entertainment industry does to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How <laughs> and, that machine uh, juices somebody and then just churns them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it goes it goes into like every basically every topic about the entertainment industry, you know, like child stars and uh, predators. And, you know, it really it's a cartoon and it's able to explore all of these really, really deep subjects mm -hmm. in, in a completely the, the transition isn't rough at all. Like even though they, they are animals and pe animal people and animals right. with people telling these stories, it feels natural and fine by the time you get to season two you're just like okay these are the characters who are going to talk about these things and it doesn't feel weird at all and um okay i'll throw that brilliant. on my list yeah yeah uh, a show it. like be that be, be ready to be sad um but yeah yeah that's one thing that's kind of held it off to me is i've heard that it's very heavy in spots mm -hmm. uh and so like that's Put it on the back burner of like, okay, when I need something that kind of takes me there. Because there are mm -hmm. times where you want to feel stuff. That's on uh -huh. my list of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's I, I, and I can understand. Um, a lot of my friends are, are less into darker stuff right now just with quarantine. And I'm like, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. want to watch that right now. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't want your escapism to, to match up too closely to what's uh -huh. happening in the world. Yeah. Uh, th there's a show that I absolutely love, uh, Big Mouth on Netflix. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of does the same thing. Where like as a cartoon about kids and people just put their suspension of disbelief on there, they're able to do some crazy stuff, like actually making a hormone monster or a series of hormone monsters. And uh, I love in the upcoming season they're actually going to tackle anxiety with the anxiety mosquito. Oh cool! Yeah, and, I saw season one and I really liked it. I I have really enjoyed that show, uh, and mm -hmm. it is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus tap dancing Christ. There's some stuff in that show that that is drawn that probably should never have been. But have it's seen, stuff um, that should be relatable. If you had a childhood that was even remotely not normal, mm -hmm. it should be very relatable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is vaguely related. Not, I don't even know if it... Have you seen Gravity Falls? <laughs> no, I haven't. But I've heard no. amazing stuff about it. Yeah, I would I would recommend putting that on your list as well. That's that's one of my favorite cartoons. Gotcha. It's, gotcha, it's gotcha, um, gotcha. the the creator Alex Hirsch. He um, it's it's again one of those shows where it and, and it's on I believe it's Disney Disney XD now. Um, but uh, it's uh, Alex keeps he kept wanting to do like 
more adult jokes and just not being able to get them in but he's <laughs> like the guy himself is like fantastic and um very uh very vocal about like you know human rights and stuff like that like he tried um and, and he doesn't go easy on disney which i love uh he he kept trying to put things in that they wouldn't let oh uh, there's a scene in gravity falls where there was he wanted to have um uh, a romance between two women characters and disney was like we can't do that yeah. uh and so he had to change it to a man and a woman and then after gravity falls ended he was like hey they made me do this and it sucks and i was yeah. like oh my god i love i love when it? when yeah. when people are when they when they talk bad to their business daddies that's yeah. that's my favorite stuff in the world. I don't know if you watch John Oliver or not on yes. HBO, but he does yeah. that a lot, and it's it's one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> um, and and I I love when he, um, speaking of something that you may have in common with John Oliver does bits mm -hmm. about Adam Driver, uh, and you had a bit about Adam Driver on your YouTube channel because I think it was pointed out to you that uh, we do to several bits of shirtlessness, uh, and I think <laughs> our props department got something together. Is this? Uh, is this what we're gonna show? Okay, um, yeah. this right here <laughs> is a very oh, yeah. good uh, simulacrum for one Kylo Ren. <laughs> and so uh, you did a series of videos, two of them as a matter of fact, on uh, the rise and fall of Ky Kylo Ren. Mm -hmm. uh, whoa, 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 what was that? What was that? <laughs> what was that? I still ask myself to this day. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was just supposed to be a silly one-off thing because there was, um, Oh, what was it? I think it was the Rise of Skywalker where there was a trailer with Kylo and it's just a normal trailer. And then all of a sudden Kylo Ren is just sopping wet and just walking very <laughs> angrily. And I found that hilarious. Like, I don't <laughs> I, I know that it was supposed to be dramatic, but I kept looking at it. It was like, this is so funny. I love a sopping wet, furious. He looks like a cat. What? I love this shot. What is this? Yeah. Um, and, and so I this idea of a Kylo Ren character trying to promote his movie popped into my head and I was like, that's I think, so stupid. I should do that. <laughs> so I've got it written down here as Kylo Ren as Adam Driver as Kylo Ren as Adam Driver. Is that is that correct? I think so. Okay. I think you okay. might know better than me. Yeah. Uh, that sounds correct because I just kept... Um, it, and, I, I started... Uh, you started in, by waterboarding yourself in the middle of a video is how you started the video. Yeah. I needed <laughs> to start with my face as wet as possible so I just had a... a I laid down a towel and I just kept like pouring water on myself. Um, because I quote, <laughs> Adam Driver is dry, Kylo Ren is wet. That's a direct yeah. quote I've got written here. <laughs> when I was recording that, it was it was so funny because like I didn't have a script and I just kind of improv my entire way through it. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the I, best way to do things. I love that shit. Yeah, I, I started in acting, um, uh, I started taking acting lessons when I was six, and I started in theater. So mm -hmm. I was doing live action acting before I did voiceover for the longest time. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, so I've done a lot of musicals and stuff like that, but I'd never gotten to like do live action silly dumb shit you know uh so when i get to do that i fucking love it and it, it, you know when i did improv shows that's kind of where you get to to explore stuff because it's just you and your imagination mm -hmm. uh and you know just embodying the complete character so getting to play kylo like that i was just like i'm just gonna make it dumb and weird and we'll see what happens and later i was cutting things together and you kind of as an actor, sometimes we, I get so into character, I just kind of black out sometimes, and I'm just the character for yeah. an hour, and we'll see what happens later. Definitely been there. Definitely yeah. been there. So, you know, like, I, you remember later. So I'm, I'm cutting up the footage, and I'm like, I said that? Oh, my God, that's so dumb. I love it. Um, so it was just, like, a really stupid thing that I just threw together, and people fucking loved it, um, which was really nice. And I got to do another video. Because the first one was um, him promoting the movie. Then I actually saw the movie and listen, everyone can have their Star Wars opinions. I hate Rise of Skywalker so much. Um, That's fair. I think everyone is everyone's opinion is completely fair because like I personally, as someone who doesn't have a lot of attachment to Star Wars, I didn't really care. Mm -hmm. Like, it was yeah. fine, but I could see enough of Star Wars to know, okay, this is going to be a big problem for some people. So, yeah. like, I can completely, <laughs> both sides are valid as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Your comments are about to just get real angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. Um, yeah, to, to, 
I'll say one thing about Rise of Skywalker and then I'll move on. Um, it just felt like a bad improv game. I think I said that in the video, but it, it felt like a bad improv game where Ryan Johnson was like, here's all these things. And then Abrams came along and was like, no, I'm going to spend 45 minutes retconning absolutely everything you have done. I was like, okay. Yeah. All right, well, we didn't. Ha okay. This yeah. is what we're doing. You didn't have to swing the pendulum that hard backwards. Yeah, it was a lot. It felt hostile. It felt like <laughs> like you're seeing angry texts from someone else. I'm not um, going to disagree with you on that one. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. There, there, there was just such a, a backtracking on so many different things. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was like that had to happen before the rest of the movie could move on. It was so important to the studio that they mm -hmm. show you that everything that happened in the previous movie was either not important or didn't happen yeah the way that you think it did and then we can move on and it's like uh -huh. just fucking take your take your spats to marriage story and leave <laughs> star wars out of it okay yeah, go punch a wall somewhere else we're just gonna we're just gonna <laughs> do star wars okay let's just fucking gaslight the audience and be like that never happened yeah what that's crazy yeah. that doesn't make any sense this is yeah. what happened you saw the movie wrong <laughs> now, um, thankfully, we've got something like Mando, and that's that's washing out a lot of bad taste from a lot of people's mouths, I think. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we were talking a little bit about some of the other projects you've done, like that Pink Blue series like I was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you currently working on? Uh, Mr. Right busy now, Person all the time. I do busy stuff. My name's Jesse, remember? I am so, oh, I'm so busy all the time, um, but, like, all great stuff, so I'm, I don't... I'm not like burnt out. I'm just like very excited to keep working. Good. Um, let's see. Well, right now, quarantine kind of kicked my ass in a way that was like, oh, we could just die at any time, huh? Maybe I should mm. do that thing that I've always wanted to do. Maybe I should get going on that instead of delaying it so much. Yeah. Um, and I had an idea for a live action series. Uh, and now I'm like working on finishing the script so that once the world resumes and it's safe to do so again, I would like to start getting it shot. Um, but uh, and this, and, this and you probably time. end up doing a move around the same time too, so that's going to be an interesting time to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm just gonna. That's just my life. It's just so busy all the time that I'm like, yeah, I can finish the scripts and record a show and move at the same time. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Um, you know what? That's future Jesse's problem, and they're going to be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Fuck him. He gets to, he gets to deal with that shit. Exactly. Uh, That's I'm his current problem. Jesse, now. current Jesse fucking rules. Exactly. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Future Jesse's gonna be super prepared for that one day at a time. But right mm -hmm. now, you're doing awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been working on finishing the scripts for that. Um and I've got some, you know when I my my method to making stuff is I'm terrible at pitching my ideas. I'm terrible at mm -hmm. pitching stuff. I like to just make the thing and show it to someone and be like, this is what I want to do, but I can't do that with this project. So it's really made me have to stretch outside of my comfort zone and be like, hey, I want to explain this idea to you. Um, and uh, so I've got uh, my, my first choice director I have on board. Mm -hmm. um, I have someone that I'm looking to tag to to uh, to work on it. Um, I've got a short list of of actors. Um, I've got a couple signed on already, and I'm like, I I this is it's I'm pretty sure this is like the I don't want to no fuck it. This is the best thing I've ever worked on. This is my passion project. Like I I there are so many ideas that I have started and not followed through with because I was like, I'm not passionate about this or I don't think this is, I've lost the steam, you know, and I shove yeah. it under the rug. But this is the thing I keep coming back to and I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever written. I need to make sure this like gets made or I'm <laughs> gonna like hate myself for the rest of my life. Um, and that's the best feeling on the planet is to, uh, you know, keep coming back to a thing and being like, okay, this is still a good idea. Yeah, uh, this is the thing that is driving <laughs> my passion right now. Yeah. No, and, I think and, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and continuing to do the YouTube channel, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because like... Uh, Reaction to that been well? Yeah, everyone's been like super cool with um, me working on so many things. I'm able to balance it. You know, I have a Patreon yeah. where people are able to get my videos a week early. And they've been really supportive of 
to everything and it's that's like met the world you know that they um they like my stuff enough that they want to give me a dollar a month or twenty dollars a month whatever it is to make sure that i keep making stuff and that's yeah. super cool that like you know people can like your content but to that degree really means a lot to me yeah to actually like, make the effort because i think that's mm. that's something that people don't understand about the internet the internet only makes an effort when it's worth it to them that's why you only hear hateful comments and very mm. few good ones because nobody feels good enough to actually send a good comment unless they feel really fucking good. Exactly. Yes. I don't know. Did you did you see my most uh, pink blue episode fourteen that came out a no. couple days ago? Oh no, I talk about that actually. Mm. So mm. Yeah. 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 Well, cool, man. I'm glad that you're able to kind of keep things going and keep things busy even during this time when we're all kind of stuck much longer than we wanted to be. But uh, hopefully. Hopefully there'll be some news in the world soon that lets us out of our respective cages or bubbles or whatever they've become at this point. Uh, yeah. And we can all rejoin <laughs> the world proper. That would sure be great. That'd be wonderful. God, that's going to be so weird, but I will love it. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of your Twitter feed a lot, I noticed that uh, you tend to post a lot of pictures like these. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what, what's that about? You just enjoying uh, your, your new self? Yeah. It's um, like I was talking about before, There, what, there's not a lot of... If I had known about trans stuff as a kid, I would have realized it much sooner. Mm -hmm. And um, I've spent so much of my life hating myself that now that I love myself, I'm just totally fucking out there. Like, I'm not afraid of anything, you know, and um, and I'm really proud of my body and stuff because I had to build this thing, you know, like right. I so much money and time and sweat has gone into making my physical form something that I'm comfortable in. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I work out every other day, and I think... I it's not just about the it. chemical process anymore. Yeah, it's a mental change that you go through. Because yeah. um, when the, so much of our mental state is tied to, to how people view us physically, uh, and in my previous form, I was so uncomfortable, I just wore hoodies every day, and I was just like trying to cover up as much of my body as possible. Now that I'm comfortable in my body, I'm, I'm comfortable showing it off and stuff, and I think it's important that um, what, what's really cool to me is that I'm being sexualized in a proper way. You know, my fans are very thirsty for me, and it's in a, a good way, because I, like, trans dudes are fucking hot, and I... I th I think we should celebrate that, you know, like yeah. I love that I'm not um, someone worded it much better in a tweet the other day. But they said, like, what's great about how I'm being sexualized is that it's not because I'm trans or because I'm a trans dude. It's just because I'm a hot dude. You know, right. like I love just being sexualized because I'm a hot man right. and you can and just not put somebody's me in a fetish. Say. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not fetishized. It's just like Jesse is hot because Jesse is hot. It's not anything weird, you know. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's the best feeling in the world because I just want to feel like every other dude, you know. Yeah. Um, and the more uh, attention that we give to uh, celebrating male bodies, the 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 better it is for future generations as well, you know. Because like a lot of dudes have body issues whether you're cis or right. trans and um our society kind of puts a lot of pressure on uh cis men specifically to be tough all the time and to not think about their bodies or or also it's it's um in media there's yeah that that so model much... of an idea man has changed but it's definitely always been there from the beginning of advertising and and anything to kind of put that ego on its frailty and make you uh realize you need this new beard trimmer accessory to make sure you look your manliest or whatever the yeah, case may be absolutely yeah marketing i was a marketing major uh for two years and then i switched my major to uh to writing mm. but when i was there it was just fucking sucking my soul out because you uh, you get two years into your degree and then they're like cool now we're gonna get to the point where we teach you how to manipulate people and make them hate themselves so they'll buy your product and i was just like i hate Ooh. this i can't do this like my heart yeah. is too soft I will not yeah. survive in this business, so I switched my major. Uh, but it affects men just as much as women, uh, but but it's in a different way. So yes. it's it's more subtle. Where like, you know, there are dudes in all the love interests always have like an eight pack and they're this and that. And so snow cats who, covered mountains on their shoulders, you know, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. D dudes who are a little bit chubby 
feel like they aren't attractive because of that. And there's like this whole societal issue that that that's that comes with this and just like sits on their shoulders and and uh cis men feel like they can't be feminine because people will think they're gay or like they can't enjoy things that are traditionally womanly like like feminine you know like sewing or cooking or something like that um unless they like grill because that's the manly version and you have to do this and and when we tackle toxic masculinity because masculinity in itself isn't toxic it's just there's a bad form of masculinity that yeah. is tainting how we view men and women and I, everyone. I'd say that, you know? that, that extremism in any direction, whether it be feminism, masculinity, politics, mm. any kind of ism, when you get to that level of extreme, you're probably going in a dangerous direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, I so can't we... think of any ism that if you went to an extreme of other than like human ism, <laughs> that would be not detrimental for you in some way. Mm -hmm. And when we tackle uh, toxic masculinity, we help everyone, you know, like mm -hmm. toxic masculinity. If we like kick it to the curb, that's going to help everyone. That's going to help cis men feel more comfortable in their bodies and their interests. It's going to help women. It's going to help trans men, trans women. Every everyone benefits from us just being like, hey, this kind of sucks. And maybe we should talk about our emotions because that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the suicide rate of, of men, whether you're trans or cis, is way higher than we would think because we're, we're, they're taught not to talk about their feelings and like bottle everything up. And so if they are feeling insecure or whatever, they just don't talk about it and, and it kills them eventually. Yeah. Uh, so men and women uh, have such different issues that they're tackling, but they are both super valid and i think we all just need to like be more open about shit and talk about shit which is what i'm trying to do with um i i do it in different ways whether it's me making a half hour video where i talk in depth about the subject or i'm on instagram and i'm like hello here's a shirtless pic of me like <laughs> you know uh, whatever it takes are, to help the cause whatever it takes it's a heavy yeah, I, burden i bear but i will post shirtless pictures to help humanity <laughs> you, so so what you're saying it's it's a heavy burden to bear it is ah. <laughs> and on that note ladies and gentlemen i think we're going to go to a short break and when we come back we've got our inside the actor studio questionnaire so you stick right there today's duracell battery it lasts up to 30% longer than the ones we made just two years ago. Duracell. No battery lasts longer. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we tend to do around this point in the show, I'm going to jump straight into the Inside the Actor Studio version of our Proust personality questionnaire, and it goes a little bit something like this. Jesse, what's your favorite word? Succulent came to mind. I like succulent. Mm. Mm, a lot of good consonant sounds in yeah. there. Yeah. What's your least favorite word? You know, I'm not one of those people. Usually people say moist. I don't mind the word moist. I, what word do I not like? Hmm. That's a good question. Everyone always asks the favorite word. I don't think anyone's <laughs> ever asked me what my least favorite word is. Now, for a lot of people, it would be moist. That kind of like gives them the heebie jeebs or whatever. Yeah. But there's not one like that for you, huh? I think as a voice actor, you just get used to all the words. Um, That's fair enough. I guess. I and mean, I've heard I've heard you use the the cunt uh, the cunt word yeah. <laughs> so many times. They're like, I don't think that one's a problem for yeah. you. Yeah, you know, it's funny when I'm pre. It's funny the, the, when you transition, you have to relearn a bunch of things, and you get things taken away from you, but you also gain things. So like now, mm -hmm. as a man. The C word feels bad coming out of my mouth, you know? Yeah, you heard my hesitation saying it just yeah, now. Yeah, because like, you're like, mm, should I like, he's cool with it. Should I be cool with it, you know? Um, <laughs> but, so like pre-transition. Just how cool should I be with <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't, if I feel too comfortable with it, is that going to weird him out? Am I weirding myself out? What's happening? Um, mm -hmm. So pre-transition, I used to say that all the time. I transitioned that I was like, I'm probably gonna stop, you know, like, but acting wise, yeah. I can say it whenever I want. If I'm playing a character, like I had to, um, I'm, uh, I'm in, uh, this project called Sparrow Archives where I'm playing one of the main characters and, uh, my character Elliot, he says it at some point, it's very casual because he's just, um, uh, 
he's just saying it, you know, and that's just like a word mm-hmm. that he can use. It's rare, but like when he uses it, it has a meaning. And um, I was just able to say it completely natural. And it was the first time I had said it since my voice dropped. And I was like, oh, that does feel like if I said it as myself, that would feel bad. Saying it as Elliot, completely yeah. fine. But like, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's just, it feels different. Yeah, exactly. Like words like, yeah pussy and stuff like that it feels more aggressive coming out of my mouth so i was like i don't think i'm gonna say that anymore like it just fe- it sounds like aggressive uh when i when i say it because my voice is so low um right. so i i got rid of that but i gained certain words like i can technically say slur words where it's like dudes who are into dudes but i just don't use that word just because other people have a history with that word and i don't, I don't want to accidentally bring up bad feelings or whatever but it's cool that i like right. exchanged you know i was like oh well you can't say this yeah. anymore you can't say this if you want to but i'm like i don't know i don't yeah, know if i want you, to <laughs> you move from oh, column a to column yeah. b <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's totally great <laughs> uh what sound or noise do you love hmm Oh, I love rain. Like any time that it's mm. raining, I, I open my window, even though like there is a danger of it getting like colder in my house. I'm like, fuck it. I love rain so much. Um, what other sounds do I like? My cat purring. Any cat purring. Oh. Love purring. Purring and rain. That's the yep. best. We went to a zoo recently and I got to hear a big cat purr for the first time. A jaguar, ah. I think. And I don't know if you've ever heard that, but it is delightful. That sounds a big big kitty making a big purr that sounds wonderful it's about four decibels lower than your average kitty cat (laughs) and i mean it sends rumbles through you it's really cool (laughs) so if you ever get a chance to do like a there was a feeding that we got to do because it was a little smaller zoo and they had some jaguars and they're like oh you get to toss it through the gate and see them and while they were sitting there crunching away on chicken bones they were happy as could be and purring so loud that sounds adorable it really was it really really was. What sound or noise do you hate? I think it might just be uh I'm on the spectrum, so sometimes mm-hmm. if there's like another noise happening somewhere, I can't focus cuz I get overstimulated and I'm like I'm trying to focus on this. So um my fan, I have to turn no matter how hot it is in the room, I have to turn my fan off completely when I'm streaming because if I'm playing a video game, uh, it does this thing where even on the lowest setting, it has a little string and it will just tick, 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 like just a yeah. little bit. And it's like a fucking yep. nothing sound, but it's the loudest thing on the nuts. planet to me. Uh, or, or things when I'm trying to sleep, like my, um, it's ridiculous. My, I don't know what's happening, but uh, there's like a low rumbling that sometimes happens in my apartment. I think it's when like a heater kicks on in the basement, but uh, mm-hmm. my toaster will vibrate just ever so slightly so it's just a tiny tinking sound and i have to Mm. i figured out because i was trying to sleep one night and i was like i just want it to stop so i put some (laughs) socks in my toaster so now i have the toaster sock that i have to keep in the toaster by default when i'm not using it otherwise it will just well that's pretty incredible (laughs) just make sure you don't leave it in there when you turn it off i don't want you to burn the house i have to be super careful i'm like so nervous using my toaster anytime because i'm like did i move did i remove the sock is my house gonna burn down so that's another just weird thing jesse just has weird fucking shit in his house i have a an owl over there that's filled with condoms and I've got a, a Daki Makara, is that what it's called? The love pillow with my body oh, yeah. on it. And I have a toaster sock. Just Jesse has just weird shit in his house. And like, if you come over here, you're just like, sure, that's Jesse's tiger painting. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just things that he has. Uh, Pro tip for the uh, fan cord, mm-hmm. a little bit of foam or a little bit of felt uh, wrapped around the actual node or just getting a longer cord. That's smart. I might do that. That's a good idea. Because <laughs> I problem solving. It's what I, I do. need to have the fan on sometimes. It's so I get so hot. I told you about how I've got all the cameras rigged up here and everything. Yeah. Uh, creative problem solving is what yeah. I do. <laughs> what hero or heroine do you identify with the most? Ooh. Spider-Man, I think. Um, because like there's a it's so fun. There's a lot of trans parallels with Spider-Man specifically. Like there's like a whole fucking uh posts posts that you can go through where where it talks about like uh peter parker could realistically be trans if you wanted him to because you can all this there's there's so much like deep shit that 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 um Mm -hmm. the spider-man 
origin story parallels transness so much as specifically trans men. Um, An injection of a foreign chemical alters the DNA, yeah. which brings about a change in his body and and these arising new feelings and emotions. And, yeah. yeah, I can totally and see Especially it. in Homecoming, you know, like the, the, the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe Spider-Man specifically, there's a lot of shit. Like, there's, there's so much, but, br- but briefly, um, there's... Uh, just like the nickname Penis Parker is so like just mm. this this little it could be Flash just ha- being a little transphobic you know like or not little but like a very transphobic yeah. if we knew that Peter was trans that's the know? direction they wanted to just go really yeah like Penis Parker you know and 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 Ned at a certain point Ned is uh, Peter's best friend he's asking questions about Spider Man like uh, because he finds out that he's uh, that Peter is Spider Man he's like do you lay eggs. Mm-hmm. And that's a weird question to ask. It's a funny line, but when you think about it, the female sp- spiders lay eggs. So that's a legitimate question that Ned might actually be yeah. curious about. Like, just weird yeah. little things. Uh, like we were talking about earlier about that innocent curiosity that comes out in maybe slightly misworded or slightly inappropriate yeah. times. like, there's so much yeah. that echoes the trans experience that I'm like, oh, this is, you know, when I first heard about, like, what do you think about a trans... Spider-Man. I was like, oh, that's cute. That's a fun idea that someone should explore. And then looking deep into it, I'm like, oh, this would really, really work extremely well. Um, So uh, Marvel hit me up if you want to do a a cartoon of some kind. Uh, That's one of my dream roles is is Spider-Man. I'd love to play any kind of Spider-Man. Peter would be great, but if there's a trans Spider-Man out there, Spider-Trans, let's do it. I already have the costume. Be honest with me. It's because of the tights, isn't it? It is. The underoos are, it's yeah. comfortable. When I, back when cons were a thing, um, when I cosplay, the zipper is such that it's like up here and I can't get the costume off to like pee at a convention if I need to. Oh. So I have to like oh. have people help me in the men's room. And it's funny. So, so there's not a spider fly is what you're yeah, telling there's me? there's not. You got to take the whole thing. It's, it's like um, a, what's it called? Women have an article of clothing. Uh, romper. Yes, it's just like a romper where I, I had a tweet about it one time where I was like, haha, you girls have to take the whole romper off just to pee. And then there's me in the fucking stall just completely naked, just taking a shit where the fucking, the whole costume's just at my feet. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> superior. <laughs> you feel like a fucking six year old who's back in school who, like, mm-hmm. you know, like is standing at the urinal with their shirt all the way tucked yes. up underneath here. And then the shorts are just dropped all the way down and they're peeing. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm the superior oh gender. Oh my god. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. One mm. time a, a Deadpool cosplayer helps me with it, and that was so funny for a Deadpool cosplayer to, to help Spider Man <laughs> get out of the costume. Get undressed. I mean, it's very in character, mm. isn't it? Uh, so, what villain or villainess? Ooh. Did I relate to? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. A villain. Thank you. Um, I've come up with these myself. Yeah. <laughs> um. I also spilled a little bit on myself. <laughs> oh, God, that's fantastic. Oh, man. Now we're just going to have to deal with this for the rest of the interview. Please, go ahead. You know, I don't know one that I relate to, but I do. So I like... Um, She-Ra has a lot of great ones. Uh, Double Trouble, Catra, and Scorpia are coming to mind, where they are the, these Ooh. characters that are... They feel very human, and they go through... Uh, the aspects of well, <laughs> I think Double Trouble is always they're just going to be whoever the yeah, fuck they are. Yeah, you kind know, of in the character. Um, I don't think they have a redemption arc where they're like, I'm actually a good guy. But like, you know, it, it, uh, Scorpia and Catra kind of go through this thing where they are bad, but they're like, ooh, Harley Quinn. We were talking about Harley and Poison Ivy and Kite Man. All mm-hmm. six of these characters that I'm talking about. Maybe not Double Trouble. Alyssa, I was, I'm about to say uh, five of them at least. They are good people, but they're bad guys. You know? So right. No, I understand what you mean. There's a very fine line between a bad guy and a villain. Right, yeah. Because, like, even um, Ivy has, that, has a line in the show where she's talking about Harley, and she's like, you're... Uh, she says something along the lines of, you're a... A bad guy but you're a good person and i think that's mm-hmm. why the show is so good and relatable to me is because like if ivy and harley and kite man were like bad people uh evil at their core i don't think it would be 
as interesting to me. I'd be like, this is just making me sad. But the fact that they are grappling with- I would say with, that you do need all of it. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're grappling with what makes a villain and what makes a hero. So like realistically, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would do differently than, than uh, Harley or Ivy if I were in their position, you know, because they're trying, Ivy especially, because Ivy is punishing the bad guys. Like she's kind of an anti-hero where she's doing a lot yeah. of fucked up shit, but it's to punish the 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 right people. And honestly, right. if I was born with superpowers, I might be like a uh, an, an anti-hero kind of person where I am hunting down people who deserve it, but I might do some fucked up like killing people to do Stuff it. Stuff to get there. Yeah. Cuz yeah. like no, I don't fucked up understand. shit. <laughs> It's the difference between like Poison Ivy and Darkseid, mm -hmm. for example. Like Darkseid is very clearly a monstrous villain, <laughs> but there's a there's a there's a very f clear line and delineation between the mm -hmm. two. Yeah, and it's yeah. like what even uh, qualifies a villain? You know, Bojack is a villain for a lot of the show. You can classify mm -hmm. him as a villain, but he, you know, I won't spoil anything. But he is the titular character, so that's not you. Yeah, you try to get better, and you try to you know the people can change and they can realize hey i'm kind of fucked up i need to get help you know so it's mm -hmm. it's really interesting studying like what makes a hero and a villain and and how it changes the lens of like you know uh how a director wants to show shit in in, in the the harley quinn movie harley is the hero but from another perspective she's the villain you know it's it's mm -hmm. crazy i love that shit i find it so fascinating uh, what would be your superpower? Speaking of heroes, super stuff? speed. I've always been a speedster. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I was um, uh, six years. I did uh, varsity cross country. I was um, from like seventh grade to uh, senior year. I was burdened with with skill in cross country. I didn't like running. What was your event? Sorry, what? What was your event? Oh, uh, oh, just um, the 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 five k, the the different events where it's like jumping over shit. That's track. That's in the spring. But fall is you gotcha. run a five k, and um, well, you could have been a sprinter or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, if you were a distance runner or a a short distance. Yeah, uh, yeah, five k. Uh, the cross country was the five k. That was the long form, uh, yeah. and I did do one year of uh what one spring i did the the, the sprint tee because i was fast but um <laughs> yeah i was just i was burdened with it because i was like i hate running but they kept uh luring me back but you're good yeah, at it. i was good at it and they kept bribing me with baked goods so it was like hey if you finish this 5k you get a pumpkin square i was like fuck it okay so i did that for six I years mean... <laughs> for pumpkin squares yeah um, that's pretty. That's pretty freaking yeah, great. It's, a, it's also a very Jesse thing. Is like being motivated by, by sweets. It was like, sure, all right, let's do it. I'll train because it's a big commitment just for like some baked goods. But you know, fuck it, let's do it. Um, it's worth yeah. it as long as they're delicious. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> would what would be your super weakness? Hmm. I I think what is just a weakness of me in general is that like without my glasses i am like blind as shit like i might hmm. be legally blind i'd have to i don't I, I'd, I'd have to get like tested for it but i am literally if i take off my glasses and i have my finger in front here i can see it has to be this close to my face because the like wow getting around here it's like i'm so blind that like anyone, if I was a speedster, I would love to have like some goggles maybe that have my prescription. I, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, because if all they have to do is knock that off of me and I'm done because I can move fast. <laughs> but if I don't know, it's like uh, people who have powers where they have to see where they're going to teleport, if they can teleport. My speed is useless mm -hmm. if I don't know where the fuck I'm going, because if I speed off, I'm just going to run into something, you know? Yeah. Or in like, I love, I haven't seen much of the boys, but I've seen the trailer and they do that in the trailer for the boys where a speedster literally runs through another human being yeah. and they're like, I can't control it. I'm sorry. Yes. And I thought that was so fucking funny mm. because that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. That's exactly what would happen. I need to watch season two. I loved season one. Yeah. I, I need to watch it in general, but uh, that's a whole conversation for a whole nother mm. time. Uh, what turns you on creatively? What gets your wheels turning? <laughs> good that you said creatively um i uh -huh, think just uh, -huh. uh the concept of time travel i love timelines and stuff like that like in real life 
um we're on a timeline we do something the butterfly effect something small happens we veer off on this whole other fucking thing so any piece of media that has to deal with timelines i'm super fascinated by because time travel is also one of the things where there's a lot of willing suspension of disbelief uh every single time travel movie has their own set of rules like realistically back to the future couldn't fucking happen because if marty fixes the timeline it all reverts back because he was never there to fix the timeline in on in the first place. So it's like this couldn't happen. Assuming that it is a singular timeline type deal, like you, there there's a lot of stuff right. that you got. I think Doctor Who put it right: wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. <laughs> you have you have stuff. to just turn off your brain and accept the yeah. rules. Like it's an improv game, you yeah. know, where you're like you they start off and they're like these are the rules. Just enjoy the ride, and you're like, okay, and you just enjoy it. And I, so I find that super fascinating. Um, and I also love just turning shit on its head. The, the show that I'm working on, there's no, uh, the live action show is is there's no real right. villain. There are villains, but the real villain of the show is toxic masculinity. All of the issues mm. just come down to that. And I love playing around with stuff like that because it's so easy to blame all of your problems on a person or a villain you know to buy a little pony they're like fuck we got to stop discord you know but some external force. yeah if if it's just this one person who's doing a bad thing but they don't yeah think about what things Mm -hmm. were put into place to make discord discord or stuff like that and i'd love to explore stuff like that so in my live action show i'm playing with that concept of like no. There are villains, but the it's, real villain is an internal thing and a societal issue. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like how in always, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. The, there might be external stuff going on that's influencing decisions, but ultimately a lot of the bad stuff that happens in the show comes down to the fact that the main characters just will never do the right thing. Yes, yeah. It's a show about Ever. bad people doing bad things. And like yeah. we were talking about before, who's the villain and who's the hero? They're all terrible fucking people, but they are yeah, the heroes. All, or like Seinfeld. They're all terrible fucking people. Yeah. And that's the point. It's, it's examining these terrible people and what makes them terrible and how, 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 they, how one simple decision out of a myriad of bad ones could really just change everything, but they, they never will. Mm-hmm. They never, they never yeah. will. Learn from these people because they never will. <laughs> yes, exactly. No. So what turns you off? Hmm. I think tropes that are just tired at this point, you know, because like mm-hmm. we've done it a million fucking times of like... Uh, like the the one that pisses me off the most, obviously for for personal reasons, is just like the trans character dying. You know, because that's just mm. what happens. The trans character either doesn't get a happy ending or they die, and it's boring. Like even if I wasn't trans, it's just boring. That's I can call that at the beginning of the show. It's a surprise when that doesn't happen. So you need to you need to engage your audience and and don't take the lazy route out. Also, just you know, right. like uh, it's like. In the 60s, how the slutty character always died, or in the 70s, how the black character always right. died first. It's, it's just one of those tropes that comes about because somebody's got to die first, but every movie doesn't have to do it the same damn Exactly, way. yeah, because they, they kind of wanted to preserve the, the, the white characters. So, like, in a scary movie, the black guy dies first. That's just what's going to happen. I don't know. Maybe we could fix this. I don't know. I guess we can't. Let's do it for 40 years. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah. boring, you know? Like, as a, con- as a, seen- as a person... Sure, it's hurtful. As a content creator, it's boring. Don't bore me. Like, fucking excite me. Do something that no one's done before. Um, yeah. Like, you know, because also, like, tropes like that, it, it just... Uh, you'll be watching a piece of media, even in 2020, and all of a sudden there's a weird Asian joke. And you're like, why did they do that? This was a good thing. That, like, you were doing fine. And all of a sudden, it's it's like the Wilhelm scream where it just completely takes me out of the moment yeah. and I'm like oh this is a why did you do that why did <laughs> yeah because be, oh this was made by a committee and not by one person with a singular idea who might have gotten input from outside people and if they had this joke in there somebody might have gone oh maybe don't do right. that right consult with someone maybe don't do that one do do it this way instead yeah just talk to that's that's also something i'm doing with my live action shows i want to make sure that I don't accidentally do something shitty. So I'm consulting with a lot of different people with different walks of life and different uh, sexual cool. orientations, different races. Uh, I want to make sure that I am don't, I don't want to be that, you know? Like, I, I yeah. it's such a disappointment when I see something like that happen. I was talking about it before. Harley Quinn, the cartoon, is fucking brilliant. But they... Um, 
like we were talking about before with Clayface and Bane, you can take this character that is pre-known and just flip it on its head, do something different and cool. With the Penguin, they just made him a Jewish stereotype, and that was so boring and weird. Like you could have done, look at the, you could have done anything with the Penguin. You had the rights to the Penguin, and you did this. That's boring as shit. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you? Mm -hmm. Not only is it offensive, but it's boring as shit. Like, it's there's no reason to do that. Do something. If I had the rights to the Penguin, I would do something so fucking cool and fun. I don't know what it is, but I think more than five seconds do, about it. Do that plus. Yeah. You know, like, I, 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 I think that giving characters multiple dimensions like that is great. You know, I loved, in taking that example, mm -hmm. seeing him as a family person. Yeah. And the fact that he happened to be Jewish should be part of the character, but it shouldn't be all the character is. Yeah. Now, spoiler alert, he doesn't have the longest time in the world to be able to show off other aspects of the character, mm -hmm. but you kind of get the intonation they're going for. And I think that's why they were lazy with it, because they knew that he was yeah. going to be gone soon, so they were like, why should we put all this effort into this one character? But here's the thing. A brood but series character. That's why you do should. That all the time. We put a lot of work. Fucking Nappa was the best character in the series, and he died. But yeah. you know what we do? We kept bringing him back and shit. You can don't be afraid to take risks. You can make a character really likable and kill them off. It's fine. Just, just mm -hmm. don't do that. Don't be super lazy with it just because you know he's gonna be die. Be creative. Be creative. I, I I think that's absolutely a great message to send out to all of Hollywood right now because. I hope that when movies come back, we don't end up just kind of seeing a retread of a lot of the stuff that we would have seen, during, you know, if COVID had not happened. Yeah. But uh, I have a, feel, have a feeling that uh, we're going to see some reverting to old habits when it comes to some of the movies that will come straight out. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. There was news about Wonder Woman 88 coming to HBO Max. Uh, I think it dropped today. Oh, shit. Uh, kind of dating the recording of this. So we'll <sighs> see. I forgot. We'll I forgot see. about all the movies that were going to come out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. A lot of people did, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, it just... It sucks. I was looking forward to In it the Heights. Sucks. I wonder when we'll get to see that. Oh, yeah. 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 I imagine so as a theater yeah. kid. And, yeah. I, and I understand Lynn uh, wanting to delay it because he was like, hey, I want this to be, like, an experience, you know? I think it's cool yeah. that, like, people can come in the theater and, like, see it. And I, and I want to wait until we're able to do that safely again. And I was like, you know what? I That's great. I love that. That's a perfect reason. And that and that day will come, hopefully sooner rather than later. And hopefully people who are watching this in the future will see this because it's kind of a time capsule when people were seeing the light at the end of the that tunnel. That would be great. You know? If you're in a future where that's happening, that's great. I don't leave my house. <laughs> I do everything here. Things are not good out there. I hope things are better we're for you. We Every single one of us is doing the cabin fever scene from Muppet Treasure Island in our heads at every moment of every mm -hmm. day for the last eight months. So hopefully you guys are in a, a better place right yes. now and not literally. Like. <laughs> a literal better place. The place is better. So speaking of, what is your what is your idea of pure happiness? Getting able, getting able, being able to do what I'm doing right now. Actually, that's a funny thing. I, I all I want to do with my life is just entertain people um, and I wake up every morning just fucking blessed that I get to do that like I never get bored I'm not bored with my work um, and I think that's such a cool fucking thing because uh, you know my, my my main job is with uh, Team Four Star and that job where I, it, I'm making and doing shit that helps people and entertains people and then I am able, because I have that job, I'm able to do my other stuff, which is write the show that is going to entertain people and help people and do might make my YouTube videos that will do the same thing. And I'm able to explore mm -hmm. all this shit. And, and that's pure happiness to me is because my, my uh, goal of life, my reason for, for, you know, everyone's like, what's the meaning of life? To me, it is that I'm able to make the world a better place than when I first got here. And I'm able to do that. And that's the, that's all I want to do. All I want to do is just make other people's lives better. You know, if, whatever form that takes, um, whether yeah. it's turning my pain into art or whether it's taking a shirtless picture or doing a dumb fucking thing where I'm Kylo Ren and I have my pants pulled all the way up to my torso and I'm talking in a funny voice. 
whatever it is that I get to do, that's all I want to do. That's all I want to do with my life. Uh, and that's, that's pure happiness to me. And what's your idea of abject misery? I think being stuck in a situation where you're not able to do that. Like if I was just, mm. if I was like super sick and bedridden and I wasn't able to do the things that I get to do now, because that's mm. just, I have such a passion for life and such a passion for making the shit that I want to do. So if I was like, if my voice was broken, I feel like that's the worst thing that could happen to me. Fair mm. enough. Uh, what would you be if you couldn't be yourself? Hmm. You know, I don't think I'd change anything. I think I'm exactly where I need to be right now. That's incredibly healthy. That's incredibly healthy. Hmm. What are you afraid of? I think how someone views you is very important to people, but especially to trans people because we are constantly thinking about how we look um, and we have all these memories and these things that we're trying to get away from from our previous lives and our previous bodies or whatever form that takes and so being viewed I just I'm afraid of not being viewed as I am if someone were to not like me for any reason that it that is who I am if they don't like me because I'm opinionated or because I'm trans or whatever I was like well I don't care about that that's fine but if someone doesn't like me because of a lie someone else has told about me that's the worst thing to me is because it's like well that isn't true so yeah I think that's the only thing I'm afraid of is is just people believing something about me that isn't true and disliking me because of it I want you to dislike me because I stand up for women's rights or that I that I say black lives matter or shit like that. You can dislike me because of that until the cows come home and then the, the cows may, might right. not like you either. I don't know. Uh, so I think that's what I want. I, I want no, people I, to see me for who I am. That's in, that's incredibly candid. Thank you for sharing. I, I, I um, we are viewing you right now. Thank you. Uh, what advice would you give to your 13-year-old self? <laughs> um, I tell him to just fucking educate himself more. I think that would just help a whole lot of fucking issues. Because even when I came out, I was still kind of a shitty person. Because uh, trans men, a lot of them become fuckboys because there's a lot of toxic shit that we try to mirror and emulate so that we'll fit in with cis men um mm -hmm. and someone had to come along and make me a good person and like help me and call me out on my shit uh it doesn't it, it takes hard work anyone you want to credit sorry what anyone you want to credit yeah no uh dash dash kwiatkowski they are they're a, a non-binary comic who um they used to be in new york they're not in new york anymore but um i i, I dated them when I was in the process of coming out and they fucking saved my life uh, them and uh, Sam Haft he's a, he's a voice actor and he's it's a whole story on my channel but like he invited me to, to play Dungeons and Dragons at a time that I was like about to try to kill myself for third final time I was like this is it uh, and then he came along and was like hey do you want to be on this podcast and play Dungeons and Dragons and I was like well I've always wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons. I guess I won't kill myself for like a month. I'll, I, I can stick around for this. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah, just sometimes it's just like a little thing. Um, yeah. And then you just keep coming back, you know, for the next game and the next game. And they, yep. the whole group just taught me that that I could transition and be okay, and I could live, and I could get away from my abuser, and I could live a life. I could just be my own person. I don't have to be afraid of everyone and everything and and being trans is not a bad thing it's a, it's actually a happy thing that we should celebrate and you know all of that just really saved my fucking life like no exaggeration um and if my 13 year old self could get more education on things that were outside my scope i would realize hey they're kind of in your scope like if you learn about trans people you might discover some stuff about yourself 
uh, that's kind of right. important, and maybe you won't right. hate yourself so much. Um, a lot of that exposure to new ideas and things that are outside yourself might actually lead to some self-identification when you realize that you relate to some of these things. more. That's how people tend to find sexual fetishes, so why not find <laughs> political affiliations and social ideas in the same yeah. way? Expose yourself to the new ideas. Try getting spanked by social change once or Hell twice. Yeah. See if uh, see if a health care for everybody blowy <laughs> gets you gets you in a different direction. You know I'm what I mean? I'm for social change. You know what? Exactly. Yeah, because exactly. like, honestly, just the more things that you learn about, it's something that I talked about the other day. I am not into a lot of fetishes, but I wish I was. Why would I not want to enjoy the most sex that yeah. I can, you know? Right? The most different yeah. kinds. Like, just try it all. <laughs> and then the same thing, quali uh, you know, qualifies for, for, um, for everything. It's all ice cream. Why not try all the different kinds of ice exactly. cream? Exactly. Like, learning about other people and other cultures. Learn about everything. And then you might absorb some shit, you know? Yeah. What is something that you think only you do? I think I have a very unique perspective and a very unique humor because of the life that I lived because I've lived a thousand fucking lives it seems like because I, I have this whole <laughs> previous life and I've experienced a lot of things that that uh, a cis man hasn't you know um, whether it's just I have the experience of dating as a female identifying person and that is so different that now that I, you know, I date women and now I, I get, I can read their body language better. I, I can under, I have a more in-depth understanding of what might be going through their minds. And I'm able to be, uh, you know, there's, there's some cis men who go on dates with women and sometimes might accidentally say something weird or come off as aggressive in a way that they weren't intending. But with me, I right. know exactly what I'm doing. And if I do something or say something weird, I can read their body language and I can be like, oh, was that weird? Was that a thing that I did that's, that I said? Was that, yeah. was that a bad thing? <laughs> and I, I imagine that because of your experiences, it helps you be a little bit more open and communicative about those feelings as well, which is always going to help in those situations. Absolutely, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. very unique that um, all, of, <laughs> all of my mom's uh, friends keep trying to set me up with their daughters because they're like, Jesse fucking rocks. Like he's communicative and open and honest. And like, he's such a good dude that I, I, I would love to have him in my family in some capacity. And I trust him with my daughter. And that's like the best feeling Aww. on the planet, you know, that, that my yeah. mom's friends are trying to wingman for me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite curse word? Fuck is great. I really like fuck. Cock I use sparingly because cock can be very mm -hmm. funny in some contexts. Um, and it's a, it's a word that we often forget. Everyone goes for dick, but like cock sounds good. It sounds funny. Like there's a lot of yeah. the hard sounds cock. Like it just wraps Huh? It wraps around your mouth is what I, I was know, about to say. I know, I know. Like, the metaphors are going to come. So just go ahead and lean into it. It's fine. Like, it sounds good. It feels good in your mouth. It's nice and round around the edges. Like, you can just say a whole bunch of stuff there. I it's agree. It's all coming to me. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good word. But yeah. classic fuck is also uh, good, too. Picture your dream home. Where are you? L.A. I've always wanted, like, a... I have a list actually of like my goals and I've like my top three like dreams. And then I have another list of like, this would be nice if this could happen. And I think uh, mm -hmm. just a cool fucking loft overlooking the sunset in LA is, is one of those. I would love that. That'd be pretty sweet. I got, I was lucky enough to go out to California earlier this year and um, it is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like just spending a month out there. I was like, I get it. <laughs> I get it now. I understand why people love California so much and why they say it's beautiful all the goddamn time. Cause yeah, it is. and me being born there, I, I, cause I didn't live there for very long. I was like a year old when we moved. You weren't writing to the hard drives at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I want to like experience yeah. it as I am right now, you know, and and, and something calls to me, you know, and I'm I'm a person, 
uh, I'm, you know, mixed. All I can think of is Katy Perry singing California yeah. Girls, and that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not where I want to take this conversation. But is it? I, I, um, but it's true. Like all the songs about California is just like, I, I think it's because I'm Mexican and I was born in California. The combination makes it so that like I don't like cold weather. I like warmer weather. And whenever Fair. I'm in California, I just feel at home. There's like a feeling that overcomes me where I'm like, this is where I'm meant to be. I understand. Yeah. I, I have felt that feeling before and I can completely identify mm -hmm. with it. Absolutely. Uh, and our last question here before we get out of here, if you had a choice, how long would it take you to respawn after you die? Ooh, what the pets, what are the benefits of like, not respawning. It's all in there. It's all, everything's in the question. Uh -huh. oh, I can see advantages and disadvantages to both. Like if I wanted to just respawn right away or if it takes like 10 this years. This is where the personality part of the questionnaire starts to come yeah. out. <laughs> I love these questions. I genuinely do because there's no better way to get a chance, like a real gauge of somebody and i'm giving you a chance to think while i'm mm -hmm. talking uh to then then getting random weird questions that go in completely different directions and getting them to just spitball answers can i ask a question of course do i do i regain my memories do i keep my memories it is completely up to you Ugh. the rules of this answer are completely up to you my friend I want to say either five or 10 years. I'm not sure which one would be better because I'd like to keep my memories. I think that would be important. Okay. And back exactly as you are. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Cause I, okay. there's a whole video where I talk about this, but, but there's a question of like, if you could be born cisgender, would I, if I could just like wake up tomorrow and be born in the, in the cis male form, would I do it? And yeah. for the longest time, my answer was yes, absolutely. I would love that. I wouldn't suffer as much. I would this, this, and this, but being trans is such an integral part of who I am as a person. And it, it greatly affects my work and my personality and my relationships with people that I, I wouldn't want that. I would, I would still want to be trans, I think, cause, cause I'll be honest with you, I hadn't even thought about yeah. that. I kind of was going on age. Like as somebody who's getting closer to 35, that's where my mm -hmm. head's at, you know? And uh, so I'm thinking like, well, maybe I go back maybe 15 years, maybe just start over as a bebe. <laughs> do we keep all the memories and stuff? Just just do that whole portion again. But uh, yeah, no, that that that's where I was going with it. However, I do really appreciate the candor on that mm -hmm. answer. Yeah, it's, it's because like uh, before, I've been working in entertainment, you know, uh, specifically internet stuff since I was 15. And I've made a lot mm -hmm. of stuff and worked on a lot of stuff that is cool. And I'm glad that it got me to where I am now. But right now, I feel like I finally have something to say. Like, I'm so passionate right. about my shit and I'm actually doing shit. And I'm, I'm sure my previous work meant a lot to people. But now I get to enact actual change. I get to like stand here you get to use your powers for good yeah yeah I'm, I'm standing here and i'm being like hey i'm a trans dude and i'm making this fucking shit and if you want to watch it cool and if not that's cool too and i think you gain a much more sincere audience there where i am they can they they the one of the best compliments people say about me is that i'm very genuine uh kind of what you mm -hmm. see is what you get i don't play nice with pieces of shit like if i don't like you i'm just not gonna bother with you i don't suck up to people so that i can can't work be bothered with, with fools uh and people love that and it it inspires more yeah. of a genuine connection and people want to work with me because of that um and that's Excellent. really important to me is that that i am who i am and that's what you see is what you get well i think it's i think that's very important mm -hmm. and i want you to know that i see you and the internet sees you i like you I hope you like you too. And uh, that goes for everybody out there. I hope you like yourself too. Hell yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our time for today. I want to I wanna thank my guest, Jesse, for spending some time with me today. This was super fun, man. I hope you had Hell fun yeah. too. Yeah, no, I had a blast.
Awesome, and I appreciate your patience during our little intermission there, <laughs> but uh, you know, sometimes tech issues happen and we deal I, with them. I know it fine. very well. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who may want to see your stuff, where, th- where can they find you? Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash nowacking. I'm nowacking on most Ooh. of my stuff, N-O-W-A-C-K-I-N-G. Uh, that's my YouTube channel, my Twitter, um, Patreon. If you want to support my videos, you can uh, become a patron of mine. You, if For certain tiers, you get certain things. I write a journal once a month. We have a movie night for certain tiers. So, certain tiers get my videos uh, a week early. Super cool. You can join the Discord and talk with other people there. It's like a nice queer space to just fuck around. Um, my Instagram is no acting hell yeah. Um, there's, I'm hornier on there. It depends what parts <laughs> you want of me. Uh, Twitter is j- jokes and I promote voice acting stuff that I'm in and Twitch streams and stuff like that. Oh, it's Twitch, no acting, I'm there as well. Yep. Um, but Instagram is just like, uh, if you want- A whole lot of thirst. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more, like i feel like hornier just describes it better where i'm just i'm posting shirtless pictures but with like deep captions where i say what day of quarantine it is and then i write kind of a sometimes it's a poem format sometimes it's free form i don't know what the fuck's happening over there but it's but it's (laughs) arts well that's absolutely beautiful and uh, you've been watching this on youtube.com slash tim leftwich my name is tim leftwich same with all the social medias and everything. Unified branding. You got to love mm-hmm. that shit. And uh, that's us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you guys next time here on Tim Talks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>